We're thinking a lot about you. Let's cut it out and send it over to him. I think it's an East European thing, I guess. Was that because of the label, you think? I'm really not a talented type. Yeah. All we care about is money. I always feel like a child, even I'm just getting older, I still feel like a child. <laughs> Hello, you middle bloomers, and welcome to the new interview episode on the channel. And today, I'm once again happy to welcome Shaky Stu of the band The Hell Pricks. Sue, how are you? It's been a while. How's, how's hi. it been? Hi, hi, hi. Thank you so, so much for having me. I'm doing fine. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Oh, well, I'm okay. I'm uh, I'm in Kiev, Ukraine, so I'm, we're as okay as we can be here, uh, of course. But, you know, but hold it up. Everything's okay. Cannot complain. Oh my God! It's you have you have to go through, and I don't even have the words for the time that you are going through. My deepest respect, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, I honestly I would never have believed that something like this could happen in the twenty first century. But yeah, um, it is, it it is unbelievable, and yeah, I mean, you know, like just just. If we're just talking about the last few years, I think so much things happened that were unbelievable. But I think that the fact what happened to you is the most unbelievable. Yeah, unfortunately. unfortunately. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully, um, we'll, you know, there is an end coming to it very, very soon, you know, and we'll be more than happy to welcome you here after a victory, uh, you know, and see, rock out at your show. <laughs> All we're, right. th we're thinking a lot about you, trust me, and, and I just wish you all the very, very, very best. Thank you. Thank you so much. And on behalf of all Ukrainian metalheads, thank you so much, because this support actually means the world to us. It what gives us strength, you know, to, to push through and carry on. So, so there are a couple of news about uh, the Hell Freaks uh, these days. Yeah. Right? Well, the biggest one, of course, is uh, the new album, The Pitch Black Sunset, which is coming... What April fourteenth is this? It's in a couple of days already, right? Yeah, it is in two days. It's crazy. <laughs> it's just around the corner. I can't believe it. I've been waiting for so long for this moment, and now it's almost here. It's wow. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, I cannot even imagine. It's been a while since I received it, and then I yeah. cannot imagine what it is for you, <laughs> dude. We are like, we finished the whole album, like the recording and the mix and the master in. Last year in June. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's, so you've it's, been it's almost a year, or at least <laughs> I mean it feels like 10 years, you know, but it's so long. <laughs> uh, let's let's pretend that it happened just now so that we can go back and you tell us just a little bit about the creative process behind sure, it. Sure, sure. How you guys how did it all form into this one piece we can hear today? Well, I think what what makes it quite a unique that that normally every time we released an album, we were able to make it like not just one tour, but to tour the album properly and, you know, to play it live and to show it to people. And after we got, I don't know, let's say after two, three years, we got sick of it. We started to write songs. Now, this time um, when we released our latest album, Got On The Run, um, and then we released it, we went on tour to Germany and we had four gigs and then COVID hit in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, we went back home and then we realized that we are going to stay at home for quite a long while. Um, so after quite a short time, we started to write a, a song because the first song that we uh, wrote was All Tomorrows. Mm -hmm. Actually, we started to write that song back when we worked on uh, Got On The Run, but um, we realized that this is something cool, but this is something different. We will not work this out yet. We will mm -hmm. not put it on God on the Run. We will do it later. So that's why when we started to write songs again, that was the first that we like took out, you know, up the cup and see while we can work it out. And then we put that song together. Napalm received that song and they said like, cool guys, we want you. And we told them, cool, and we want you. So forces were united and... um since then that was i don't know in 2021 or 2020 something like even 2020 i think yeah in 2020 we started to work on the new songs and um you know we're not really the band who ever has a concept what to do so we're never really like um 
We never had the moment where we just sit together and uh, made a decision like in which direction should we uh, continue with the songwriting. Um, so we just started to do it very naturally and give the process its space and its time. And it turned out way more aggressive than it was um, back then, what we did before, um, which made me really happy. <laughs> um but when it comes to the process itself, we did not change so much uh, because it's still our bass player, Gobby, who is writing the instrumental part. We are still writing everything at home. Actually, here in this flat, we are recording the most. It, this is a this is a super small, typical flat in Budapest. It's like <laughs> around 50, 60 square meter. Yeah. And then we have like a very, very tiny room. And uh, this is like where all the magic happens and That's we record awesome. stuff. And, um, you know, I also have like, I never know the name of it, but in this flat, I have a very tiny room, which was originally the place where people store their food. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah. The closet thingy. I, we have that in Ukraine as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th yeah I think it's an East European thing, I guess. So, so we, we had that and I decided that we don't need it anymore instead of we made a vocal booth out of it. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, so idea, actually. Yeah, so um, there I have a place where we can record and actually where I can practice uh, whenever I want. Um, so we did a lot of stuff at home, a lot of things. And uh, we worked together with um, regarding mixing and regarding uh, post-production and also the master. Uh, we worked together with people from the USA. So um, that's why I think they have a very unique sound also and they, they lend it to us, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. It's weird because, you know, on one side, there was not a big changement compared to God on the Run, or at least uh, no big changement on the way how we wrote the material. Um, but I think it, it turned out quite different. And uh, yeah, I am very proud and I just can't can't tell you how excited I am that it's so so out in such a few days or even that hours. Was, <laughs> that, that, that is awesome. And I I have to be honest with you, I agree with you. I mean, I've had a pleasure of listening to it already, obviously, um, for several times. And I have to point out that, in my opinion, it is a much more mature sound and record than anything you guys released so far. Yeah. Do you agree with this assessment overall? Yeah, I mean, I, mean um, I think there is like, you know, there is like a very big difference when you compare, uh, there are, I think there are two different eras when we're talking about the band. Like the first two albums, they were really like the baby steps of this band. The mm. third album was, was let's say when the band got into a teenager age, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I think our latest album got on the run. I think it is also, um, I am very proud of that record, but it's, it's way more, uh, it belongs way more to punk rock, I would say. I mean, it was already punk rock mixed with aggressive elements, but it was way more punk rock. And with this album, with Pitch Black Sunset, I felt like, I never felt so free, like when we did, did this album, because there is like, there is like uh, metal, there is hardcore, a lot of hardcore, a lot of metal and a lot of punk, and it's still melodic. And it's just all about, um, for me, it is all about uh, feeling the freedom of creativity that I've never felt so free before. So um, yeah, m maybe that's, that's what you said. Maybe that's the major thing. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I always feel like a child, even I'm just getting older, I still feel like a child. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not alone here. But but yeah, I agree with you. Was that because of the label, you think? Because yes, I agree. It is much heavier record than it was that anything you released before as well, as well as being mature. There are elements of modern metal and industrial metal, even yeah. I feel, like, you know, yeah. you can almost hear small little bits reminiscent of Rammstein here and of something, you know, completely new, like yeah, uh, there is, there is a mix know, of like, everything. Yeah, stuff, <laughs> stuff like that. So do you think it might be because of the label you're on uh, right now or is just happened to be so? No, I, I really don't think that, you know, um, of course, on one side, I, I always, you know, I really lo loved the Napalm Napalm records because they were always very supportive when it comes to females in the metal scene. I know that a lot of people think that this, that they are 
doing too much. I think that they are doing exactly what is necessary um, mm -hmm. to bring the female uh female uh artists on the same level like the guys you know so that's why i always really uh love that label there are many bands that i adore that are on that label so uh on one side it was something that i really wanted to be at the place you know um mm -hmm. but on the other side i'm like and this is just my personal aspect because i mean we are a four-piece band and i think everyone would have uh, their own input regarding this question um but i personally i'm like caring a lot about um learning new and new vocal techniques and getting better in singing and i do a lot of exercises and I practice a lot and um it was I think almost like four years ago when I started to get interested in the metal vocal techniques and a different type of screamings. Um, but you know, I'm 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 really not a talented type, doesn't matter what we are talking about. I have to work for everything so hard. It it takes me always ages till I learn something new. And it took me like three years till I felt like confident enough to use these screaming techniques. So um, when we started to work on a new album, that was actually quite clear to me that now I'm good enough to use these and I want to use these. And actually it's super fun to do these, you know, I'm really enjoying it. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't at that uh, point like three years ago, like in 2020, like in, yeah, like when we wrote Got on the Run, I, yeah. I already started to learn these techniques, but I, just wasn't good enough to do to use this so I didn't want it to use this you know so I think it's just like I think this is just when the elements come together you know like I wanted to do more aggressive music the label uh, the label is also like well known by their more aggressive music so I think this is just like a lucky coincidence that's awesome. Well, it, it's amazing to see how you guys your evolution guys and uh, what you said just proves how much you deserve this, right? And I, I absolutely love it. I'm very much excited to see what is next for you. And you started speaking about the, you know, the fellow musicians whom you look up to at the moment. Who would be your ideal duet, you know, to go on stage with? Is there anyone? Um, we were, well, actually, we, we are always talking um if we would ever do a song with another single to to with with another singer who could feed us and um you know i i'm always telling this in so many interviews that i'm a huge fan of female voices but if it would be about the health freaks i would definitely not ask for another female voice i would definitely go for a male voice just because you know it, it harmonizes much better with each other Mm -hmm. and um i never dared to ask him maybe i will do it one day i'm just i'm just afraid that he wouldn't even answer or i'm i'm sure he wouldn't even answer is um the band raised fist i really loved that hardcore band mm -hmm. and i know i would love to have alexander on one of our singles it would be it would be pretty cool he has a very unique voice and it is very i very much look up to him because of his uniqueness you know well, that's um, okay. let's yeah. let's cut it out and send it over to him. <laughs> I think we would would we would say like, who the hell are these East European nobodies? <laughs> <laughs> You're good. <laughs> uh, so, so tell and tell me a bit more about the lyrical themes, which. Uh, you know which you are raising on this album because yeah. last time you, that we spoke i remember you spoke a lot about you know personal freedom and feeling you know uh feeling empowered and stuff like that has anything changed and uh you know and what what did you try to basically bring to the table on this record yeah well um you know uh this album is still a scan of my own brain and soul and heart uh, i think the only thing that really changed is that um this time i felt like um okay that may, might sound weird but i felt like i i don't really have solutions for my problems but i know that many people have the same problems like me so i was like i will just write down whatever i feel it is a very very introspective album like there is Mm -hmm. a lot of honesty a lot of craziness actually in between these lines and um let's just pick out the darkest one which is weeping willow a song about the deepest pits of depression and i just wanted to write 
a song, you know, where I don't ask for excuse because I don't offer any solution, you know. I just wanted to to write down how I really feel um, because, you know, I, I, I very much believe that um, the underground metal rock, whatever, underground rock scene is united by the honesty in the lyrics. And I think I think with the age, <laughs> I'm just taking this more and more serious. And I think that this is like the biggest difference between mainstream and underground music, that in underground music, you can be very honest and you can be very straight and uh, you don't have to change yourself. You know, you can just be whoever you are with all your mistakes. And I know that we are all people with a lot of dark thoughts and with a lot of mistakes and time to time we all feel shit. Um, but music is the thing that can unite us in a way that, for example, I mean, uh, Maybe if someone reads my lyrics or just understand one line and they can resonate with it somehow or they think like, oh, wow, I'm going through the same shit like she is. This helps so much. I know that this helps so much. And uh, I wanted to I wanted to deliver this time really this type of content. It's not content. It's a stupid word. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but this type of material, you know, yeah. um, which is... But just pretty much just about pure me. <laughs> well, this is awesome. And I think this is why I and all the fellow people who will be watching this, we love rock and roll, right? It's because of its, it is real. It is real yeah. music. It is not yeah. only in terms of the way you play it, but also the way of the messages you portray and what exactly you want to show with this, right? For years, so many, and mainstream has been telling us about how fake we are. Uh, and how yeah. all we care about is money, booze, and drugs, or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Well, in reality, it is not. It, it, heavy metal and metal community, rock community, just overall, our not uh, our underground community yeah. is so all embracing, and um, it is so supportive. You know, yes, and and and, and you know, it also like um, when we just saw. Let's say this talk now just about the bands like all the bands even those who let's say we uh mark as they made it mm -hmm. everyone is working so incredible hard you know yeah. every time when someone is telling me like oh yeah sex drugs rock and roll and telling like stories how i don't know let's say let me live their their years and i was like I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I worked my ass off to be here and I'm still nowhere. <laughs> and, I, and all I did was working so hard for it, you know? And um, I think a lot of people sacrificed a lot for the whole community and, and everyone is doing it uh, because of a very good reason, because they wanted to belong to a family, to, you know, being united. And it is amazing. I mean, just we are living in two different cultures, two different countries, in two very different situations. And still we have the connection just because of the music. And this connection goes worldwide. So I think uh, the power in all that is just amazingly huge. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. So, so what is next for the Hell Freaks? I know you just, you're getting ready to release your, your new album. <laughs> Dude, I just want to, yeah, I just want to release the album and, and drink a but huge cup of wine on that evening <laughs> or a glass, glass of wine. <laughs> That's the next. <laughs> That's awesome. But um, in terms of the tour and, uh, you know, anything planned already and uh, yeah. so where and what are you guys going to be taking on the road? Yeah, so um, we're having a little round in May. We're playing in Czech Republic and we have a couple of shows in Germany in Hanover, Berlin, Hamburg, um, Köln. I'm sure I forget something. I always forget one city. <laughs> so we're having a couple of shows in, in, in Germany. Check it out. Uh, we already announced a couple of festivals and there is definitely some more coming. Um, but at this point, I'm always asking everyone to join our social media pages uh, because actually that's where we share all the news. And um, yeah, that's the place to go <laughs> for information like that. But, but we are working on it to, to play a lot live because we really need this. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think the... Uh, the world of music, not only for rock and roll, but in reality, but for all musicians has changed so much since, uh, you know, since the late 80s or whatever, uh, that without going live, you you almost cannot succeed, right? It's very hard to succeed just by releasing the stuff 
online oh dude that's like oh, a, that's a so different difficult topic um music industry that did not change since the 80s music industry changed a lot in the last five years honestly like amazing it's it's crazy and there is a lot of changement that i don't like but i just have to accept it i mean um the whole game changed with the streaming platforms mm -hmm. and people just think that okay maybe this this means that um people don't really buy cds anymore they are streaming music but no not it's it's affecting so many levels i mean um this is actually also one of the reasons why we did the recorded a quite short album because we realized that the time of real long player you know like uh, and what i personally really love but it's kind of over because people don't really they only listen to a full album if they are already into a band but mm -hmm. the way how you can find new people is with singles and singles and singles and that changed the game totally you have to be you have to be very present online like you have to care about your social media pages you have to care about um like giving life science on the digital world that you are there and of course on one side it is cool because you get connected with your fans all around the world you can actually talk with your fans all around the world this is amazing this is i am very thankful for that and this is great but on the other side uh, it makes it often so difficult you know how often i have a very long day of work and then i just let's say have a little bit of free time a little bit of me time here at home and then i have to decide okay will i go and practice some singing or will i do a social post so that people know that we're still there and then time to time i have to decide that i have to do the social post and my heart is bleeding <laughs> in these moments um that it's it's a must unfortunately it is surely different right i mean i think it'll take some time for us to adjust for all of us right for the entire community for to adjust there are some benefits of it as you said yeah. right the benefits of discovering new music uh you know it would be much harder for us for example oh, okay for us we're close to you uh but uh you know for somebody <laughs> in the united states most likely yeah. to discover a band from budapest yeah. um, and it is today on yeah. one hand, but on the other hand, yes, there are so many things. But what I was trying to say is uh, for everyone, especially, right? Without live concerts, the bands will not survive ever, any bands. And I'll be very honest with you, even the biggest of the bands, so go and see your favorite musicians live. Uh, go support them with merch, um, you know, by, by buying their merch and make sure to enjoy rock and roll the way it is supposed to be enjoyed in sweaty clubs and on festivals and not only online. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, people, I don't, I know that you all don't know how difficult it is, especially since COVID, and how difficult it is for bands to go on tour. The the costs for going on tour are for all bands extremely high, extremely heavy. It is very difficult to manage it these days. So it is, as you just said, it is super important if that if there is a band in your town that you like, even if you just, maybe even if you're not the very biggest fan, but you like them, go there and support them because it means this is now the way to keep the scene alive. I totally agree with you. It is very, very important. And uh, we have to remind people that this is really the heart of the whole scene. You have to go there and you have to support them. You have to buy merch. And um because this is such a pressure thing and we have to take care of it. And this is the way how to do it right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you. So, Sue, uh, on that note, in order for us to close the episode, because we can talk forever, but I assure, uh, I'm yeah. sure you have other things to do. Before. I have a next interview. <laughs> exactly. So super quick, can you share with us one craziest story which happened to you on the road? Oh my God, I like it. Mm, I think my favorite story is still the story um, when we had a show in Germany. It was a festival in yeah. Northern Germany. And we, we were on tour and we already heard the gossip um, that the organizer of the festival, he just left and took all the money away. So there is a very anarchic scene there and and um yeah i mean we said like okay let's go there i mean who cares we are already on tour we have really nothing to lose at this moment so just let's go there it will be fine <laughs> and, 
And it was even worse than uh, than what we expected. Like it, the organizer really went away with all the money. You know, some people some, uh, who worked there just went away because they knew that they will not get paid. But other people were still uh, staying there and tried to make the best of it. It was a it was anyway. It was a punk festival. Oh my god! I've never seen such a chaotic scenes. Whatever we said, let's do a show. We'll see. If, We'll see if they will even hear something because there was no proper sound. There was no live, etc. It was very, yeah, I said chaotic. Yeah. And I like <laughs> at the very uh, beginning of the show, this it was a punk festival, and some guys were so drunk that they stand in front of the stage like totally naked, like they drop off all the clothes, you know, totally naked. And you know how it is when especially guys when they they are drunk and they see some others doing stupid things they think oh this is God. this is the best no. idea in their life right so <laughs> at the half of the show i was standing there in front of a full naked audience like like a full naked very drunk audience and i just i almost couldn't continue because it was so hilarious you know they were so drunk and it was like <laughs> How I was just really feeling like, how the hell did I end up in this situation? This is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny. Well, hopefully your next tour in uh, will be a bit more pleasant and uh... <laughs> with a bit bit more clothes, please. <laughs> <laughs> just a tiny little bit more. Clothes. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> yeah. So, Sue, thank you so much for joining me today. Any last message for the fans, both old and new, in Ukraine, in Europe, and uh, all over the world? Oh my God, there it is. I just want to send out a big, huge amount of love and let you know that we're all thinking about you. We're all with you. And um, I don't know if I, I just I just send you like power as much as I can. So maybe if there is some witchcraft here left in us, we hope it will help. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so, I, uh, once again, on behalf have all Ukrainian metalheads. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much, guys, and yeah. and keep strong, guys. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, guys, the Halfrix uh, new studio album Pitch Black Sunset will be out in just a couple of days, April fourteenth, via Napalm Records. Make sure to check it out. I'm sure you will absolutely enjoy it. So, thank you so much for joining me today. Keep rocking. Thank you so much for having me. Take care and bye. Yeah. See you next time.